All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> Good morning, Greg. Having some te technical <clears throat> issues on my end uh, as we're getting started. And I know you just got back from the the eye doctor appointment. So I'm seeing you're just probably just seeing a glowing exactly. orb in front of you. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'm actually facing the computer right now. I could be <laughs> facing outside. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna have like just just replace like a dummy in this video seat or something like that. You'll be talking to that exactly. the entire time. Walk off, right? <laughs> you're, you're on your cell. So uh, <laughs> so today uh, so today's topic is um, we're gonna be talking about priming, about psychological priming and what that means. Now this is something that we use all the time. It's well, a lot of people use it. It's part of how we all humans process information. Right. We use it from a training perspective, discussion perspective, even here on the podcast when we introduce certain stuff or the intro or whatever. And so it's something that's explicitly there. Uh, we just haven't or it's it's always implicitly there, but we haven't explicitly discussed it. Right. It, it has pulled something out of these terms. Right, right. Right. Not like this, but so which is great. So I will have for everyone listening, there's there'll be a, a, a link in the episode details of a great short article gives a whole bunch of topics examples i'll use some from it today to kind of frame the discussion a little bit or or prime it i guess as we should say and That's and, and uh and kind of kind of go from there so I'll, I'll jump in real quick where i can give kind of a quick little synopsis of what what that said Certainly. and we can get a, to, to what we mean but you know the basic understanding of of priming there's there's different types of examples but it's just is if you're exposed to one stimulus you know, um, it can uh, lead you to uh, basically some other related stimulus or think either linguistically, perceptually, conceptually of something else. And what I mean is literally very something simple. If we're sitting here talking, Greg, and I um, keep referencing the color yellow, right? And then I say, hey, Greg, um, you know, name the first fruit that comes to your mind. You might more likely be want to say banana or lemon or something that's yellow because you were sort of primed in that way. And there and there's different ways that this is done, right? And there's all kinds of different types of priming. Yep. And there's ones you can jump into the article. I just want to mention a couple because there's positive and negative priming. So priming influences our processing speed, how fast we process information, memory retrieval. So you can do that in a positive or negative manner to speed it up. You can slow it down. There's different kind of semantic priming. That's the banana yellow mm -hmm. kind of example. Uh, there's associative. So like certain things are, are chunked together, like cat and mouse are often linked together. So if I think of a cat, I'm more likely to think of a mouse or vice versa. Uh, different types of repetition priming, that's a big one that that we like to do. We use um, it all the time. It, yeah, it's it's because you're more likely to respond a certain way more quickly each time the stimulus appears. That's why even on the podcast, so here is repeat certain words over and over again or draw it back to something. Um, it's not for our benefit it, or or to annoy you. <laughs> it's, right. it's actually so you recall that in the moment when you hear that word, you go, oh, wait a minute, I know what that means. And it'll automatically your schema kind of light up or your mental process can, and you, you'll, you'll draw from more areas of your brain. There's different types of perceptual priming. Um, they, this one gives a great example, uh, great example, the, you know, the word goat will evoke a faster response when it's preceded by the word boat, because the two words are perceptually similar to your brain. They're so, uh, close. And this is a big one with sound too, because anything would sound like, I love the song lyrics that people make up because they don't know the actual lyrics of a song. If they did uh, go too fast or something like that, excuse and, me while I like, kiss this guy. Yeah, exactly. The Jimi Hendrix one, where I kiss yeah. this guy. Right. And we hear what we want to hear. And there was a recent one couple of years ago it was like where people it was going around on social media where you'd listen to it and is and it was is the person saying laurel or are they saying yanni and depending on how you were primed is what you heard and it's hilarious yeah. so so that's there there's just just some some general examples and and this is just a process that happens in your brain again to sense make to um understand a situation to recall events how you process information right the the, the song one is a perfect example you're doing sort of top-down processing your brain is hearing it yeah. uh he doesn't like an incomplete picture it's not clear what you heard so it'll jam something in there whether it's right or wrong and now that's what you believe and that's what you'll keep singing right so that that's how it's it's just a great example for one uh how powerful it is but also how prevalent it is and how your brain is trying to get to the answer 
before you consciously do, right? It doesn't want you thinking. It doesn't want you burning too many calories. It's going, no, 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 I got this. I got this. I got this. So that's kind of my my intro to it, I guess, Greg, and, I, and I'll let you obviously get, give yours. And and that I just want to refer everyone back to that article. I have it in the link. It's great. It's something you refer to. And, and they've got what, what's good about that one too, Greg, that you sent. It was a very well mine or something, but yep. there's within there, you can then click on more in those different exactly. areas. So I love yeah. that because you can deep dive all the specific topics that you want. So that'll be in there, but I want to throw it back to you, uh, Greg, before okay. we jump so into all the examples. If anybody's ever lived on a, a ranch or a farm and you've had well water and you've had a pump, uh, uh, the water, then what you have to do is you have to prime the pump. Mm -hmm. So what does priming the pump mean? Priming the pump means that you want to reduce the amount of air in your line so you can create a suction that will actually be replaced by the water pressure. So in your brain, you have obviously your short term or working memory, which we like to call it. And you have your long term memory that's made up of a number of file folders in different areas of your brain. So when you see, feel, hear, smell or taste something, what happens is the associated files, and they may be associated, like Brian said, semantic, which means language words, right, they may be a positive or negative, a very negative experience will elicit a different response. But what they do is they'll come forward and be between your amygdala and your prefrontal cortex to be primed so that they're available for use, just like playing cards. Is, mm -hmm. is That's another metaphor, example we use. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and the idea is that your brain can select something that you've already done or know or experience, or you should know it's survival uh, priming. And the idea is that it's going to be more efficacious. It's going to be mm -hmm. more efficient. So I, I, I got just a couple, uh, yeah. just to give you an example, yeah. like when, when Brian was going through all the lists, uh, those are the folks that are in the audience will remember that we talked about this uh, back in the combat hunter days, if you were in any of my classes, because I would say that's why this mistake set the filled sentence worked so well. And I'd have words up there that only were right. partial words. And, and, and everyone's seen those, they come out all the time and right. say, look how your brain said, yeah, th and those and, come up constantly, right? But the reason we had that, Brian, yeah. is because we would use that and then go to binoculars. Why? Because yeah. if you're going to scan and read left to right, try it right to left and you're going to stop at every word. It's not normal for your brain. And I mean, clinically normal. So what am I saying? So if you're going to use your binos and you want to scan, scan from right to left, or, or if you're, you know, a person that reads Cyrillic or you're, yeah. you know, uh, uh, doing it backwards. Arabic, and yeah, you... Why? Because you're going to notice the nuances more. I'll give you another one. Uh, uh, you talked about, I just wrote it down, positive and negative priming. W what happens folks is Brian and I are minimalist. So even though there's 80, we all say priming instead of saying A, B, C, D, E, yeah, yeah, F, yeah. priming. Yeah. We just, just say they're priming. Use big, big bucket instead of 37 small exactly. buckets. Exactly. Because, because you can, just like heuristics, yeah. you can make the rest of your life yeah. just defining it. Yeah. So positive is where you put together, like we do in class, certain imagery along with sounds like, should I stay or should I go? So that at a key moment, your brain cues on that sight, smell, or feel and says, this is familiar territory. I've been there before. Negative priming. And, and uh, adults only audience for this next uh, 35 seconds, you've heard it in blue jokes all over that if you want to, so, you know, delay your orgasm, think about baseball, think about baseball. Well, that's negative priming. What you're doing is you're trying to retrieve a memory, a sense memory about baseball from that deck of cards, Brian. And while you're searching through the 52 that you might have stored, it's probably, you know, 5.2 billion, right? But the yeah. idea is that while you're looking for that, you're not thinking about, oh my God, I think I'm gonna, you know, have, have an orgasm. So if you can think in those terms that you can positively impact and, and make it much quicker, or you can negatively impact and make the response much slower. So like a fear, fear or a startle response, Brian, we would want to negatively associate that. It's okay to be afraid in combat. It's okay to have explosions around. Well, you. you see what I'm trying to say? So I don't have that detrimental PTS every time that I think so, of those moments. So the, the and this is this is the the kind of point of why we're we're talking about this mm -hmm. is because this priming is is how much it affects your behavior. Oh yeah. Because your attitudes, your beliefs are then going to change and and you know uh, change how you process information or how you look at a situation, which will then change your behavior. Right. So yes, so th absolutely. this is why priming is so powerful. So I'll, I'll give one uh, uh, simple 
one that actually they use in the article because I like these because it really, really gives some insight into uh, how psychological priming works. And what mm -hmm. they, they use one, they said a study published in Journal of Aging and Mental Health found that priming participants with negative aging stereotypes, so, you know, stereotypes about older people, negative aging stereotypes resulted in more negative effects on behaviors and self-rated evaluations. Priming participants with these negative aging stereotypes led to increased feelings of loneliness and an increased frequency in help seeking. In other words, bringing to mind stereotypes about elderly people being lonely and helpless actually led to people feeling lonelier and acting more helpless. Right. And it's right. so incredibly powerful. That goes back to the, uh, hey, this is the most difficult training in the entire world. Okay, well, now exactly. it is. Or, yeah, hey, exactly. the worst, the worst it's thing. It's an IED you, lane. Right, yeah, right. The, the, the worst thing you'll ever have to do is, you know, uh, take another human being's life in the line of duty. Well, it is now. Now that now you, I'm considering all I'm, of those things. Now yeah. it's a not now I that's the way I look at it. So so let's go back to to late 1950s, early 1960s. Okay, the, the Reem is out there and he's searching and foraging for food after post womb, and the <sighs> thing is that as he's growing, he's seeing advertisements over and over and over for something called Wonder Bread. Yeah. And every advertisement shows a shirt, shirtless kid about my age that's eating that Wonder Bread and then going and doing something amazing, Brian. So we got it primed in our brain that, holy crap, we're going to go out there and we got a baseball game or a football game or something else. Better have a piece of Wonder Bread. Nothing on it, Brian. Just taking it out of the pack and eating the Wonder Bread because that file folder was, hey, all of these jam-packed nutrients. Hey, how do you relax after a big day, Brian? You have that cigarette. You take yeah. that cool smoke and relax. The problem is that the brain doesn't know the difference between priming for those fake news things, yeah, and priming for real. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, kids will play better on the sandlot if you buy them a baseball uniform and yeah. everybody's got the same teacher on. Uh, a kid will perform better in the martial arts dojo if they're all wearing a karate gi. Why? Yeah. Because that priming gets the brain ready for the event. And you're going, it can't be that powerful. It's hugely it, powerful. It, it influences how you will perform in that moment and for the rest of your life. Go, go to what everyone, the big, you know, during COVID lockdowns and still to this day, sort of how much has changed in terms of remote work. And what uh -huh. you have to tell people, like, you have to create a, if you're going to work from home, you have to have your own spot, a designated area where you're going to do your work. Exactly. I don't care if it's, if how tiny it is, it's one corner looking at the wall with a desk there that's only for that because if you start doing it in bed and doing it at the kitchen table and then yes. what your brain doesn't like that it likes compartmentalizing and chunking that information to these little areas right. so so it, it starts to lose the importance of it and now to just literally to get it back something that simple if you go to the and, and you know if you go to the actual um the park to the ball field and you cut the grass and you make it look nice yes. and you put the new bases out there are kids going to play more and better yes they will they because now your brain goes oh yeah i I get it. I understand what I'm supposed to do here. But when it's a little bit of that gray area or, or it starts to the, that P takes over, right? And I start to, it starts to devolve. My brain then starts to devolve. It pulls back a little bit. It goes, well, well, maybe that's not all for this. Does that kind of make sense? It's example? spot on. And anybody that's ever attended one of our T3s, everybody will remember Shelly yelling out, craft or noon. And it's time <laughs> yeah. to go to the construction paper and the uh, different dolls that we had and the balls and the the, the, you know, all the, the different colors. The... <laughs> Shut up now. The hotel later <laughs> with the furry conference. No, but it, seriously, uh, uh, we would have all the crayons and the paper yeah. and the scissors and everything. And people want, well, you know, the the administration, the colonels and the Senate were always coming and go, what's all this for? What What is this? What yeah. we're trying to do is tap into the creative part of this person's brain. So no matter what they're given, they're able to turn that into a sense-making problem and a, pro a problem-solving answer for the people that are in the class. So, for example, saying, okay, your color is green and you have to have a mascot that's not a frog. It can't be a fish. Yeah. It can't be the Hulk. But you have to make sure that you tie it to something and then everybody else has to have the color. Then you start the terrain denial. Then you start to, to encroach upon the other. Brian, what happened is we were using that impact of the positive priming to prime their brains that no matter where they were, 
they were able to pick up a stick off the ground and go, you know what's important about this stick? And then go. And, and Brian, to capture somebody's attention, specifically a tier one operator or a first responder or a cop, you have to be that way. If, if you're too clinical in a class, even though you're the smartest person on that topic, you're going to turn them off and shut them down. If it's all delivery and there's no interaction, you're going to shut them down. Right. So part of the legacy that we did uh, 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 was to create in the minds of soldiers, sailors, and airmen, a new way of solving problems using uh, memory pegs, using things that got yeah. them excited. And what I would tell to to the, uh, I don't want to use the word dipshit on, on the podcast, <laughs> but I would tell oh, to, to some then. of those Marines, no, let's not use that. <laughs> but what I would tell to some of those Marines that were so protective of their, their squad, yeah, you, you taught a squad of Marines how to fight. I taught an entire generation of Marines how to live. That was the difference, Brian, because what we did with our priming is gave them tools to solve problems well after they were in combat, well after they were Marines, well after they, they you know, uh, uh, left and became uh, model citizens. And that's a huge thing. And how do you do that? You rewire the brain. So that well, mapping and, that we did was very important. And, and that's another example of how you incorporate, you know, because I know a lot of people listen to this, obviously are trainers of some sort or you know what i mean or, or involved yeah. in training it's like okay well how, how how can i use that right right i want to get i want to use the benefits of it and not do it the wrong way right obviously that's yep. that's, that's, that's that's the most important part but you know exactly what you what you talk about is um it's kind of like you know the the ied training you know it's like i want to show you photos Spot of on. this this is what it is we're going to hide some and it's like well you get these companies that have a, you know a you know 100 million dollar contract to create fake inert ieds life -like, though. And but they're, they're like, like, they're like antiseptically clean and they're mm -hmm. heavy and they look exact. And it's like, but this isn't how it looks. It's a dirty, nasty thing. Someone jammed some, some, some shitty, you know, plastic explosives that they had left over from wherever yep. into the nose cone of a beat up 105 round that doesn't even look and, like a 105 round. And drug round. it with I mean, a burlap yeah, sack, And then Brian. duct taped it over yep. here. So yep. the idea was, wasn't just, here's what to look for. It's, it's breaking it down into those, those elements of, of what it is. Yep. And then in inserting those elements into training scenarios. So, so the, the, you know, the cotton ball with the nail polish remover on when you're searching Perfect. a house, right? Okay. That's nothing, but that smell is going to create a huge memory to go, well, I can also make explosives out of nail polish remover. Um, yep. And looking at we boil stuff down. I mean, you brought it up as being the minimalist. It's like, okay, well, if I'm going to make, you know, explosives, homemade explosives, or I'm going to make certain types of drugs. I need yes. all of these different elements. I need to have a double boiler. I need to have cooling. I need to have venting. So I don't need exactly. to look for the bag of dope or the, 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 uh, the, the explosives, you know, already packaged, ready to go. Exactly. It's, it's what are these elements out there? Because that will prime me. We do the same thing, even mission focus and predatory looks. Hey, look for this. Because that's priming me to go, exactly. oh, now I'm oriented on the important part in this context. The, 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 the sense making you, you, and problems on the decision is, is going to come to me now because of my role in the situation. I don't need to learn all this stuff. I need to look exactly. for indicators to prime me to go use the training that I have. You know, it's, your it's your like, IED portion triggered in my mind a huge argument we had. So uh, uh, early Afghanistan, things were changing rapidly because – Iraq taught us lessons, but the best terrorists were already on their way to Afghanistan yeah. to influence. And so they had this fat blowhard, and I'm fat, so I can call him fat, that was standing up in front of the room full of generals. And it was a New Zealand guy and an Australian guy and all the, the different people from, uh, uh, what did they call it back then? The, it was not a joint task force. It was something else. And they're all standing around this room. And the guy says, there's an intrinsic problem with the depth of an ID. The large size is due to the culvert's position. And when the sun comes up in the Eastern religions, and I cut them off and I go, they put them in a culvert because the culvert's a hole that's already dug. It's already been dug. Okay. <laughs> and I said, the terrorists you're dealing with are so lazy that they go, I could dig in the heat or I could put it in that hole that's already been dug under right. the road that they're already going to use. And he goes, well, you're oversimplifying everything. And I said, no. yes, I am. I really <laughs> am though, Brian, in this instance, yeah, yeah, yeah. because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're using imagination to create explanatory storylines, Brian, that don't exist. Right. Right. So I am, I am trying to oversimplify it to make you look like a boob. Why? Because that's negative priming. So every time you think of me in the room, you're going to go, what an asshole. Yeah. But you're also going to remember the culvert story. So how, 
how big were the bombs in the culverts? They were huge. Why were they huge? Because you knew an MRAP was coming. No, no because, because you had this it. huge locker size of a hole, and you could jam all kind of stuff in there. So uh, uh, if you were going to listen to Brian on a podcast, Brian always repeats certain catch things in his mind. And he'll also he'll start saying, if you see a cluster of cues that tend you, uh, to, for you to believe that this is about to happen next, what would be the three or four next cues you'd have to see? Yeah. So what, what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, you remember when we were kids and they would have that, that uh, piece of paper at the dentist's office and hand us a crayon and you had to connect the dots. Well, part of the elephant's trunk and part of one of its feet were already there. That's called priming. And yeah. as you started filling in the dots, you go, oh my gosh, it's an elephant. Yeah, that's called discovery learning, right? So the idea, Brian, is that we engage in all of these because we understand the brain doesn't want to. The brain wants to make order out of chaos but it, it's not high on solving problems. Now, it likes solving problems if you're doing like a Sudoku or a crossword. It right. gets into that because then it wants to say, hey, look what I can do. Just like your dog, though, right? So if you're training your dog, what do you do? You, you're going to train your dog by buying five dog beds and putting them <laughs> all over the house so your dog can sleep anywhere. No, your dog's going to be wandering all night long yeah. trying to go, which is my bed? So that's another example. And I know I, I, I ambush you with the oversimplification, but you see where I'm going there. So, so we oversimplify it by saying, no, this is your bed. This is your feeding time. This is when you take those cues. Why? So when something is contrary to my baseline, it sticks out and I know it's wrong. So file folder comes up with priming. I read it and I look and I go, none of this looks familiar. What do you know? You know, that's incongruent signal and it's about to be a shit sandwich. That's the beauty of our method, right? So, so I, I can't believe that we're constantly uh, having to influence people to come to training. That's the simplest, cheapest form of brain training that gives you the best uh, return on your investment. And what I mean by that, Brian, is it doesn't matter what you do. If you're HR, you'll go home and be better. You'll listen better to a person on the telephone. You'll be better when you're shopping at the mall. You'll be more pragmatic. But why don't we don't want, want to do that? Because we still think that we're in charge in some small way of controlling the environment around and, us. And, and that, nothing that, can be further from the truth. And that's, yes, you're, and w which is why it's almost, uh, you know, sometimes when we talk to certain people about this stuff, and, and especially within the context of our work and training, mm -hmm. they're almost like, you know, it's like, well, you're oversimplifying it. It's like, yes, we, we are, but we're oversimplifying it in the most complex manner you could possibly imagine. Exactly. Meaning because if you the, open the, you the first you, door. Well, yeah. Right. Be, but, but at the same time is you don't need to know, like I, it, knowing the 10 different types of, of, of psychological priming is not going to fucking help Precisely. you at all. Not it's a bit. Not. And as now, a matter of fact, it's going to be negative it, prime. It, it, it could, it could be because you're focusing on the wrong thing. And this is actually where I think people take stuff out of the, the, the academia and they, they, yeah. they take it and use it wrong. Right. So you have someone that studied this that said, okay, I've identified all of these different types. Cool. That's great to study and understand and see how the effects, but that's the right. point. You don't have to then go, well, let me use, you know, negative priming in this place and let me use associative priming over. It's like, no, Precisely. fucking stop. Like you're, right. you're way over, you're priming you're over complicating is enough. this. I, so, see, that's what I believe. I, so, I think you're onto something. But you have to start with what's the most simple, like what's the most elegant. I want the purest fucking crack rock to smoke, right? And then everything that do. comes in behind that is, is important. But at the user end, what does the user end person care about? Dude. I just want to be able to identify the three people out of this thousand that I need to fucking pay attention to. Perfect. These are the exactly. elements you need to look for. This is how you understand your environment. Remembering these small cues exactly. is enough. You don't have to know the fucking second law of thermodynamics. It doesn't matter to the person yep. using it. If you're teaching these elements, I would hope you have a a, a rigor, you know, a, a yes. depth of knowledge in all of these things. Yeah, because we're but, not saying be stupid and walk into no, it. No, 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 what, no. But what we're saying is the smarter you get, the smaller piece you should be able to influence. I, I'll give you another brief example, the night letters. We were getting night letters all over uh, Sangin. And, and the idea was there were very threatening light night letters that were coming in, and there were very detailed messages that were out there. And uh, we we're standing outside waiting for Ashura. And I got my Terp translator with me and an old guy. And I go, hey, old guy, you don't look stressed at all. I'm stressed because of the night letters. He goes, hey, none of us can read. And we laughed for 15 minutes. They weren't afraid, Brian. Why? 
because the they're method, posting it on the wrong door. You got it. They, so, so the idea is how many times do we do that story in our own life where we're talking oh, yeah. on a wavelength, right? And the person's nodding and they're smiling and they're going, I have no idea what the fuck this guy's talking about, <laughs> but they want to be polite. So they're grinning. Yeah. And they're nodding to you. Brian, that's why we talk so much about the warning with rage. When you get to rage, you're not processing information at a, at a, a normal, a clinically normal human uh, rate anymore. And rage, ha a rage has to, to seek its own end. Yeah, it's, it's like a floodwater that has to abate over time. So you going in and going, hey, taser, you know, or yeah. let's tackle that person isn't going to help anybody. Right. So, so I have a knife and I'm in rage. Well, then get a mattress and barricade the door and back up. And then maybe 10 minutes later, after they tire themselves out, you can talk to them. But going in right then, Brian, see what I mean by the priming? Yeah. Priming, the situation can prime me or I can prime me for a situation. Yes. Yeah, so that's a, that's the 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 um the big part to focus on too, right? And that's why we talk about even like, you know, what's a five minute discussion before you go do something can, can do change. It can change the outcome of every situation you go yes. into simply by, and this is what we're talking about when we do that is, is I want to prime something. So even if you look at learning, you know, part of the reason why people do the, Hey, coming up next, we're going to be talking about these few things, yep. right? You, you do that because actually a lot of people learn better that way. Cause their brain at least goes, okay, I have, I at least know a little bit about where we're going. So I'm okay yep. to learn, right? If it's completely out of the blue or so out of left field, it can have a negative impact where they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now it takes this? time. I don't understand yeah. this, but just those little priming cues. And that's why it's, it's, it's just think of a preview and, and we, we do that. That's what, that's what a TDG, those tactical decision games, that's kind of what they're meant to do. Right. It's not a brain game in the sense that, Hey, I'm going to, you know, get better at chess and that's going to help me think strategically, you yep. know, no, it will in the game of chess. You know what I mean? So, so let me, <laughs> let me talk about that dance dance revolution. Yeah. There, there's a part of the class folks that we do many different aspects of the class and facets, but there's one of the parts of the class where we're trying to talk about like logo art and, and trademark yeah. and this, and it's for a very specific thing that you won't get unless you're in the class. But what you can tell from the group as an instructor, you're all yep. instructors or listen to us anyway, is who prides themselves on the wrong things. So we've had classes before where the person uh -huh. comes up and in the time that we gave them, they had the most beautiful logo yep. art and tattoo yeah. art that we've ever seen. And then we go, okay, what's the substance behind it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, okay. But we came up with a beautiful song yeah. and we're all wearing uniforms that well, we cut from fabric I, and then we, we go get and then great. we go over to the other team who's got literally a stick figure six-year-old level yes. drawing and it's the most intricate complex logo art ever because there's so much meaning behind every single and everybody in that small group knows it and they get it so wh what are we saying we're saying that you can sit there and say uh, a perfect analogy for me, Brian, because everything rises and falls with either the Simpsons or family guy. Yeah. So Homer Simpson finds his brother that he didn't know. That's a rich car executive. Oh yeah. That's he right, goes, Homer, that. I'll fund absolutely anything. You build your own car. And Homer spent so much time <laughs> having cup holders everywhere. Right. And a window yeah. this and a foot massager and that, that the car was so big and ostentatious and, and expensive that they couldn't sell any of it. That's the problem. You don't need triggers in your environment and that's what priming is about priming yeah. is about triggers in your environment or in your own body that warn you or help you understand like for example you have that nice smile animated face uh uh, uh that's because you want to break down barriers because if you don't get out of the cave and trade with other uh townspeople you're never going to make it through the winter right the country mouse city mouse right and the, all yeah. the stories that go along with that are, are testament to that but you also smile to show your teeth so you show people that, listen, if I'm pressed and you're going for the jugular, I will bite you. OK, and, and the, so the, the idea is that the chemicals that are primed in your brain, like oxytocin, the love drug, they're there to hint you in the direction of certain file folders, but not to prime you to yeah. a decision. They're, they're supposed that. to suggest. Go can ahead. you go a little bit deeper into that and what you mean by that? Because it was yeah. a good comment. I just, just, uh, so, so the idea is that environmental cues, whether they're internally based like uh, electrochemical neurotransmitters or externally based like a smell, like a pheromone, Brian. You know, you go into a, a, a dance hall where men and women are dancing. There's pheromones that are flying. 
But what they do is they trigger us to certain things. Hey, I'm going to get lucky tonight. I'm going to give this person my hotel room or whatever. And, and else, what right? it triggers you is dependent on your experience, your knowledge, exactly. your own specific brain, right? And and so the idea is the path, the script that you're going to follow isn't written in stone. It doesn't say club or drag her into the cave, do this right. or you know, rape this guy, you know, do the, the, what is that? Kevin Spacey, you know, apparently the new role in every <laughs> mo movie is yeah. chief molester, no matter yeah. what continent Jeez. he's on. But the idea is that what it does is it pushes you, it nudges you, Brian, it hints you down that way to say, if this is the path you want to take, here's a couple of ideas. Why? Because the future isn't solid. It isn't written. Even in a, a self-defense scenario, there's the ability yeah. to negotiate. Yeah. You, Why you would have that have been written in? You see yeah. what I'm trying to say? Because of free will. So f the, the idea of priming is priming gets us to the, like uh, 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 so much has been written about priming. You can lead a, a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And and then it was yeah. one of the, the wranglers that we had yeah. to tell, look, you can reach right up the horse's ass and grab it by its front teeth and jam it down there. And it's going to resist and back up all yeah. the way, right? So you have to learn certain things. So priming suggests but learning solidifies. And that's where we get those axons and those dendrites because now you learn, hey, that, that's negative. Uh, 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 Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, the further Jeffrey Dahmer got into his um, list of fetishes, the worse it was for him to have a natural erection and orgasm. So he had to continue down a path, Brian, to prime himself with what? Violence and drugs and yeah. alcohol. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And then, you know, the scent of decaying flesh. And for anybody that's out there is going, Oh my God, no, that's psychologically and, 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 and uh, physiologically how he had to do it. And, and you write, uh, uh, Coram has been writing uh, uh, lately about the Do pitfalls Dr. of, of Corm, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Corm, yeah. about the pitfalls of, 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 of uh, pornography. Well, listen, folks, not only is pornography bad for everybody, it's bad for the electrochemical neurons in your brain, because what happens is you're creating a file folder, a positive file folder for all the fun that goes with it of something you may never get. So then when you finally meet the person that you're attracted to yeah. and they don't meet this mental model, Brian, you're depressed you, all the time. You, you, you're, right? you're creating fall, like basically false narratives or, or an impossible exactly. standard sometimes that you can't live, that no one would ever live up to. I mean, no, but in some way. So, so you're, you're creating, um, you know, this inevitability of failure with, with all of those things when you do that. And, and then what do you do? You have to go to a counselor to walk yeah, you back from you the walk back. And it will, that's, on. and that's what I see in, in, in training with, you know, the negative versus positive stuff that I see, yep. you know, everyone wants to throw everyone in some crazy stressful situation. Um, now maybe that's, necessary for some sort of selection process to see how someone operates under certain conditions as okay. you're assa I'll assessing them right but, but you can but, do that with a safe room yeah, yeah but but meaning meaning there's a number of ways to do that yeah. and there's a purpose behind it but that's that's not training though that training is very different than assessment right exactly. uh, of, so so when you're doing that you know we, we see people just some in, insane training scenario we get completely overwhelmed so negative priming is good in a sense that you can say hey you screwed up but but you have to show a win meaning they so what, what did you have learn? to say oh i burned my hand but if i do it this way i won't get burned the next time and there's a way out of this because then i so, the so, negative part then has value because i see what wrong looks like right and then i see what right looks like so then what you have to do to that is you have to constantly and consistently build on that file folder so the next time you say look that's glowing red that's likely hot so you, then you stick yeah. something over there and show the temperature. Then the next one, you put a pot with the handle sticking out. And yeah. you go, look, it looks like you can grab the handle. Shoot. Then you touch the handle and pour the stuff on. And now it's, you know, yeah. cold water. I, but I the you. idea is that yeah. what you do is you build in complexity. Why are you building complexity? Because I remember being at the IIT with the early uh, infantry immersive trainer on Pendle and with the early people out there where they let the Marines uh, uh, run the training. Yeah. And, and while that was good for some of it, they had the rooms where everybody was going to die. And I would ask the Marines a grab sample, it's called. And I would say, hey, what did you learn from that? And they go, don't go in that room. And I'm yeah, like, okay. There you go. But, 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 but Brian, what did that teach us? It taught us nothing about yeah. that situation. So by uh, uh, the smart room or the safe room, by having to solve challenges to get closer to the door, I love that. Because that shows, and that's why we had the craft afternoon, that shows that there's an inherent ability in humans to solve complex problems uh, uh, by themselves or as teams and what's the distance or what's the uh, uh, gift? The gift is distance from the danger or time. So you can either continue to blow me up in an IED lane and go, see, what did I tell you? Yeah. Or you can say we were in a five ton and there was a clear ant trail. 
And it was like, okay, what is that? And the guy said, that's because all the farm vehicles are coming up onto the road and they're depositing all that farm dirt on the road. And I go, okay, what would that look like? And they go, look, it's from your punkin, you know, the, the rear axle, the transfer gear case is called the punkin in the, in the country, right? They'd say, when you pop up, that vehicle's now riding, you know, yeah. on a smooth road and it deposits those. And I go, wouldn't that be the direction that the lines on the road are? And they go, yeah. And I go, <laughs> why would it come all the way across the road? And why would it be a single line? And we're all looking with binos and the one Marine in the back goes, fucking ant trail. And we all, and Brian, I was crying, tears were falling. Those Marines learned their way out of that situation. Why? Because there was sense making and problem solving. So priming with a question as an instructor can be infinitely more important than giving somebody the answer. Yes, and and, and so we have to, do you remember when we were working with Stanford Research Institute and we had the RPG? And yeah. what did we do? We we let it on the table for a while, like yeah. like uh, Jane Goodall with the mirror with the muscles, yeah, yeah. Just right? Let it sit out you got to let them play then, for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they yeah. lift it, and then they start taking it apart and asking questions. And so, and the next thing you know, they're taking it and they're making their own rockets out of it and doing their you own got stuff. It. Yeah, that, and the guy goes, "Why can't I do this? Because I I can set it here and then put that on a uh, on a UAV." And and that's what we have to capture, Brian. That's the essence of priming is that if you prime the right way, like uh, linguistic priming, I, I get it. But unless you're going on a game yeah. show, I don't get why you would use Well, that. Yeah, it's, it, right? you really have to, there's, the, you're, you're putting so much thought into something or so much time into something right. with, yes, you're going to return, but is it not, not worth all of that effort you put into having every single word here? Like that's, that's, right. that's, that would be insane. Those things naturally happen. Right. right. And, and, and so I, I get that, but, but it, it's focusing on, you know, what do I want to, it's, you know, I've given the example on here a hundred times. I wake up in the morning, brush my teeth, look yourself in the, you know, in the mirror, someone may yep. try to kill you today. Not it's going to happen. Not it's, a, exactly. it's just, what is it? What am I doing? I'm just priming my survival system to go fucking wake up, dude. You only had a few hours of sleep. There's life out there. And you know what I mean? And it's not, I'm, I'm not you, forcing exactly. a square peg into a round hole. I'm not saying I'm going to die today or something, you, but you, you and I were in Virginia a couple of months ago, Brian, and a person from a specialized unit came up to us and they were asking all, remember the question, all the right over, and over and over and yeah. over, you know? And so it got to the point, it was like, oh my God, we got to take a, you know, a break from class to answer all these questions. <laughs> and so he promised us it'll be the last one he said to us. And he said, what one thing, what one poster, what thing can I put on the wall just before everybody leaves the ready room in the morning, the patrol ready room. And you remember, I told him, put a mirror there. And you go, what? And yeah. I go, the mirror is a priming tool because you look in that mirror and you go, dude, it's me. I'm going out this door right now. What do I project? What am I looking for? And what am I looking like right now? And the kid was like, oh my God. And he wrote forever. And I go, mirror is two words. Oh, mirror. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? I want to, I want to capture that yeah. moment that you said that. So Brian, I would say that's a good thing for our listeners today to try is priming, try to prime something. So if somebody's coming in, and you uh, are going to be late for lunch because they're coming in the last thing before lunch. Try something like, hey, you know, I was just about to go to, to lunch, but I always have time for you. What do you need today? Try that priming and see what the person does. Because if you go that, hey, I hope this doesn't take very long. I'm about to go to lunch. That's a negative priming. Yeah. Because what are you doing? The person's already, already on their heels going, well, I don't know if it's very important. It's important to me, but it yeah. might not be important to you and your spam sandwich, right? So, so the idea is that when we're talking in lexicons and semantics, I would say that you can use priming as a de-escalation tool, okay? Listen, we don't want to fight, and we'll take as long as it takes. Just tell me what's on your heart and what's on your mind so we can get to the bottom. That's good. You get what I'm trying to say? Now, okay, everybody just stop this shit yeah, right now. That, and we're going to start over. There we go. That could be a, a negative it, form, it, right? No, and it has a it has a bigger effect on your behavior than than you realize. You know, saying, yeah. hey, if you do that, I'm going to shoot you. Well, I've I'm yep. I've now that's now going to happen, right? If that So person... go back to your favorite thing on the playground. Billy, if you go any higher, you're going to fall. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I guess that's about to happen. So, yeah. so those type of things will happen and then ends justification. Obviously, after they happen, we'll go, wow, I could have avoided that. But what would we tell Billy then? So instead of telling the person, look, your behavior is scaring me. Let's talk about how we can, you know, make this situation a win for both of us. Yeah, well, you can leave. Yeah, but I didn't call me. Yeah, I get that. But, you know, the, now what are we doing? No, it, We're talking. And that's it, a, it's a, a form of de-escalation. It's the right? same thing I do with, with my wife and the insurgent and everything. Like, you know, my wife tell her, like, well, don't get hurt or, or don't, you know, don't. And I'm like, right. so I go, hey, 
focus on safety, focus on this yes. or this one thing, especially with the trampoline that she's got now it's a hey, focus on this, make sure you do that. And then it's like, okay, so you, you frame that from the pot yes. and from the negative of just, yes. Hey, don't do something stupid, which is funny. Cause everyone, especially in certain communities, one of the big sayings, is, you know, saying, instead of saying goodbye to someone or they're taking off for deployment or something, it's just, yep. Hey, don't fuck up. And it's like, there you, know you go. I mean? and, but it's a laughing <laughs> thing because we all know, but, but that's that a that joke trying to poke them. Yeah. 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 Say, yeah. That, so so, that's why I say when, when somebody says, well, what could be the likely outcome? I said, well, you could, uh, you know, get killed or worse. And yeah. they go, well, what's worse? And I go, I got you thinking. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, so you don't want to do that. But but priming doesn't have to be a laborious, uh, labor-intensive thing. No. Uh, uh, people try it, and I think incorrectly, Brian, they try it with the platitudes. And I'm still reading this stuff yeah. about, oh, my God, the, the philosophy candle has been lit, and it's racing around the oh world right now. Jeez. And and, you're, I, and it's I, all your buddies, the Stoics, are the, the yeah, popular one of the jour right now. So, you know. first of all, do you know that those people have been dead for a good long time? <laughs> okay? And even the Parthenon looks like shit if you look at it. It's a wonderful <laughs> well, thing, it but now. it's not like a great – that's what I mean, though. <laughs> so, so, if you go, hey, the architect that built that thing, that's yeah. the guy that I'm going to bet. Look. You're your own person. Prime yourself. Prime yourself to be the best you that you can be. And check in once in a while. Check in with you. How am I doing today? Because if not, Brian, you can chase your tail all over and be just a miserable ass all day long to everybody. Or you can say, okay, I decide that this is the future that I want. So how do I get to the future? The, the, the cops, if, if I read one more of the, oh, uh, you know, you don't understand, just thank a cop for this. Yeah, I do the same thing with the Lawson's guy that delivers my milk. Thank you for coming over the mountain trail so I can have fresh milk every week. If you start thinking that you're different than everybody else on the face of the planet and you earn something, Brian, that's the wrong direction. So, so a better way of looking at that is what have I done for me today? What have I done for my house today, my family, my wife, my dog? What have I done for my street today? If you think in terms of that when you go out there, one, it's a great way to baseline because you'll notice what's normal for an environment, right? Hey, looks like Todd's having a hard day today. Wonder if there's something I could do, right, to ease his load. Think about that. That's baselining and de-escalation in one fell swoop. And, and so what, what's the duty to intervene? The duty to intervene is when you find a novel, inspirational way to de-escalate a situation immediately or over time using what? Using priming. Hey, you know, that'll... That you catch more flies with honey. And, and then the person looks and goes, what? Well, I heard my dad said that one time. Let me tell you about my dad. What are we doing, Brian? We're dialoguing and we're not yeah. fighting and we're not killing. That, that's, that's a key to priming. Yeah. And, and, um, and this isn't um, one of the negative things about it, you know, especially in any type of, of, of job that requires a significant amount of training and there's procedures and policies mm -hmm. and rules that you have to follow you know it in a sense without meaning to that sort of can be negative priming because of course it can. you know you're you're going to come up and you know this is that what we i have a trained solution for this i have to follow these procedures this is what i was taught without just it like you're set you're saying right now it's like okay well where are we starting? Where do we want this to go? How do I how do I prime the situation yep. for the best benefit, the best outcome for all? You know what I'm saying? Is that's where it starts. And then however the policies, procedures, and tactics, techniques work into that, great. You've already got some great ones. But you what do. am I really trying to do with the overall situation here? How can I prime myself to think that way? And those exactly. are the those are the the brain games in a sense that we like playing because those are the ones that are realistic and helpful. I mean, and it's, have the best return on your investment. I absolutely yeah, it's agree. It's very, very, like the huge, it's a, it's a, one of those asymmetric things that you yep. can do that. I mean, the, the, the bang for your buck on having those five minute conversation is massive, massive ROI on that. Right. Because yep. you, it's, it's those for simple what things. Come on. You, you, I mean, really what you're talking about there. Yeah. It's just, these are those simple things that we like to have because you know, it doesn't require anything. It doesn't take much. I don't need a space. So you can literally say what, you know, what would I do in this situation? How could I prime that situation? Exactly. Right? I'm going to come up. What, what, what are some things that I can do to, to, you know, help create the structure necessary for, for a better outcome. And so, so and, let me give you a mind game to yeah. do just that. So Sean, Sean wrote me when Sean's on fire this morning. So he took the fourth off, but the fifth he's on it with a vengeance. And I must have had five or six articles between four and five. There's Reem, you got to look at this. You got to look oh, at geez. this. So the very last one that I looked at, and, and I don't have it committed to memory yet, but a female officer and a male officer at a nursing home. 
and I believe it was in Canada, but it doesn't matter where it was, but I'm trying to say if the folks are trying to look it up and do their homework, it might start Canada. And what happens is the female is acting up and acting out and she's in a walker. Yeah, so can you can you quick like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So of, of, of the, in the story, what you mean she was acting up and she's acting not, out. Yeah. She's not just being mean and indignant to the staff members, right? but now she's armed herself and she's walking around the nursing home with her walker threatening people. Okay. So she's made, okay, poor choices, exacerbated by the fact that now she's crossed the line and she's into illegal territory, right? So the nursing home calls the cops, the male and the female show up, and the female looks at the cop and the woman, Brian, I'm not exaggerating, is in her late 90s and moving mighty slow at the junction, as they say. And the female cop looks at the male cop, according to the report, I can only report what I read, and says, hey, I can just remove the knife. I can take the knife out of her hand. And the guy goes, F that, and pulls out his taser and tasers. Oh, there you go. Now, she's all of 100 pounds. And the taser makes her stumble and fall from the walker. She hits her head. The yeah. approximate cause of her death is the cerebral hemorrhage and the skull fracture. Right. Brian, we're right back to just because I can, should I? So what was the thought process? What was the priming? So the copper going, hey, I can take that knife. That could have been a duty to intervene with. Let me try to take the knife. You be ready with the taser, right? There could have been more descriptive Brian, uh, there could have been a, a, hey, I don't think we need the taser with this one. You distract her and I'll grab the knife. But because that dialogue never happened, Brian, why? Because they didn't tabletop it. They didn't rehearse it. They didn't do part task training. They just gave the officers the training and the taser, right? I, I mean, where was the math? Where, where was the calculus on that? Well, point? that where that, was the level of threat? That's... But I, I'll tell you right now, it's all legal. Everything they did was legal. They didn't have to try to wrestle a knife away from her. But somebody should have said, hey, this is an old woman. You get what I'm trying to say? And I could say, boo, and then grab the knife. And, and those are the cases that get me, right? Because the lack well, of on-duty roll call priming, that could have saved a life that day. Well, and I, I think they also... The, those are the ones that we talk about or that bother us because it's the, this is... Um, this is a very simple solution to that. That's not yep. you know, meaning like this isn't something that requires some massive investment of time and tools and, and funding and all and you, like these are I agree. The most avoidable. And it's obviously that's catastrophic to that person, their family, um, that community, the nursing home, the, the, well, the, and other the people agency, there? Pe the way yeah. people look at things, look at what you did, yeah, regardless totally of what actually happened, you know, it's going to get spun negatively, you know, that she, it, so, so there's, there's all these things where it's just like, well, the, the, the juice isn't worth the squeeze here on it. Like, what, what are you trying to do? And, and that is why we kind of talk about different cases than what most people do is because it's like, look, you can go to these sensational anomalies that, yep really only we'll happen never repeat them so well exactly Here, on to Hudson. but and and right and and well we'll, we'll pour our kinds of thought and commentary yep. into that um yet over here all of these that are you know the 97 percent of the ones that happen that are completely avoidable those are the ones you should focus on because yep. that way those big ones that happen they are rare then it only happens, you know what I mean, when, when lightning, you know, strikes and hits someone. Exactly it's, very, right. it's a rare case. Like, it still but happens. But talking about that, why, why can't we just engage in that conversation? Hey, listen, there's a storm out tonight. Remember Flash the Bang. Remember that simple algorithm can keep you safe. Or uh, uh, the one about the, the silage where, you know, confined space entry. Or the one about, hey, listen. If there's wires down, remember, 35 feet's a good rule, and I'd rather call the power company than go in there and check on my own. You know, Brian, those type of statements, when we're conversational, mean more to that person. They're going, ah, wait a minute. They're thinking of me. They're well, thinking ahead. These are all there's examples of priming. I mean, that's all you're it doing. It is priming. One examples of priming. And so what do you want to prime, you know, people for? Sa same yep. thing. That's why the same thing with 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 the insurgent. You know, it's, you know, it, every, every day, you know, going to school, it's, you know, <laughs> work hard. Be kind and make good choices. Exactly. So I That's don't say priming. don't fuck up. I said don't shut nope. your mouth when the teacher's talking. It's like no, make because she knows what a good choice is. She knows exactly, when she's doing right. something wrong, so she'll know make good choices. So because then I can go back and she's a kid, so she's gonna get in yep. trouble, and I can go, what did you do? Was that a good choice to make? No, I should have known that when we did this, but at the time, okay, you see how you get caught up in the time. And but that's wonderful. The, now you conduct an after interview. Yeah. And you've got the left and right lateral limits and you're nudging her back into the lane. That's, That's fine. That's Sean wrote another one, Brian. And, and it was about these two people that ordered uh, Uber Eats 
and they were waiting in their hotel room and, you know, Tom Catton around and all of a sudden the door knock and they go, well, it must be the Uber Eats. That's priming. Okay. Yeah. They opened the door and it was an armed robbery. Yeah. And people forced themselves in a room. So what did they do? The people down at the desk, uh, the food uh, service arrived, said, hey, we'll take it from here. What room's that for? Went up and did an armed robbery, right? So what does that teach you? It teaches you that if you're going to say, well, it's probably this, you're not going to look in that little peephole or call down to the desk and say, hey, there's somebody in my room. And these people, they could have ended up much uh, uh, worse right? than just getting their food stolen and their watches and their shoes, I think they took. Uh, but Brian, those are the type of things. Whenever you say this must be it, you said it earlier, you create yeah. an inevitability in your processing. And that can't occur. You, you can't, like, uh, is the roadway the same every day on your way to work? No. Your tires have changed even overnight. The temperature has changed. The pressure, the barometric pressure, the heat, the 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 axle, and the amount of lubrication. Everything changes over time, right? Yeah. So you got to update that baseline constantly. I always like using car metaphor or food when I'm hungry. Yeah. But the the car or the truck thing to me is the easiest one. When that warning light comes on, you can invest in a band aid and put it over the warning light, or you can actually read. Hey, what is that warning light <laughs> trying to tell me? It's yeah. your choice. You yeah. Know? One's no, a lot that's... cheaper. That's a that's a that's a good point. Uh, can either just how hide these alerts for right now? It's like uh, you know that doesn't exactly. get rid of the problem. It just gets exactly. rid of the alerts for it's the problem. It's a form of negative priming, actually. No, yeah. I, it, and it's it's you know I, I don't know. Well, that one just popped in. I don't know if you saw the one the the I think you sent it out too, but what went around where there was the janitor at the at the university that uh, was annoyed by a, a, a the, oh, the alarm noise, the alarm yeah. going off, so he shut it down, and it ended up like shutting off the refrigerators or freezers for this multi-million dollar study that was yep. going on completely ruined the study for it's a like, hundred year study right know, something like that you know but but did 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 anyone did anyone fill him in on the significance of what this was and what was going on exactly. no he's the janitor what does he need to know exactly now, priming <laughs> priming goes back to our survival corporeal selves yeah when we're at the airport and somebody's running for a plane we orient towards that yep. person to make sure they're not running for a free donut or running from a pterodactyl yep. and, and, and we'll always do that. So if we learn that naturally we're primed and, and psychologically and, and physiologically we're primed, socially we're primed. If there's unrest around us, Brian, we're liable to engage in unrest, right? We're, we're liable to degrade to that level. Yeah. If we just merely understand how priming is around us all the time, we can use priming then and tweak it a little bit for our best interest. It's like when I see people who <clears throat> show up dressed for the job. You know what I mean? Like, I you agree. Go, okay, they they put that time in. This is what they're thinking. But people can take that the wrong way. They're trying to, you know, it's like you remember remember uh, that uh, who was it, Doctor Tether, when he was head of DARPA, and he came yep. out and he was where he's you with know, the fat scientist guy, and he's got the Marine yep. camis on, and he's got wearing the uniform, walking through everything. Yep. And of course, the Marines are getting pissed because he's not a Marine. He doesn't get to wear a uniform. He had his it's name like, taped. That yeah, Doctor Tether and DARPA, because exactly. he wanted to. He's literally putting himself, he's priming himself going, okay, yes. I want to be, I want to walk in their shoes. No, I've in never this done this before, but like, I have to yes. somehow get into it. And that's how he put an effort. And I love that when people show up, like kind of yeah. dressed how they think someone should dress for that role, even though it's exactly. kind of maybe they're a little off or whatever, but it's like, okay, they're putting in the effort to show, you know, here, exactly. here's what I'm, what I'm trying to do. You're priming so, you and you're priming the audience. So in other words, yeah, you're trying to in influence the yep. baseline. Absolutely. All right. That's well, funny. Well, we we had uh, we had a whole um, we had a bunch of uh, examples in there and and how we approach it from, we from from a lexicon you know a semantic sense and and how we how we we do that and build it into a lot of stuff that we do and how kind of simple a lot of this stuff is is right. to not overthink it which is why I want to have that that article and the, and the episode details if you're listening you should check that out because it kind of gives you a quick little okay I understand this and you'll likely have your own ideas about how you could do that Certainly. showing positive and negative priming. Hey, this is what right looks like. This is what we want to avoid in those quick five minute conversations um, because that alone will help create that new sort of neural pathway, something for your exactly. brain to go, Oh wait, I now, I now have this other option. Piece or, of candy. Ooh, yeah. Piece ooh, of candy. Piece exactly. candy. Exactly. <laughs> it works though. <laughs> it, Not it, just it, on James Woods. It does. Uh, it does. So um, yeah. Anything else to, to add on that or any final words, Greg? Yeah, I, 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 I like that. I would, I would say, Brian, I would encourage everybody to try priming yourself for a couple of days in a manner or try priming your friends and see the positive uh, yeah. effects of it. 
and then you'll understand why we work so hard on it even during the podcast yeah yeah i do that i do that with my wife like earlier in the week i'll be like hey did you um did you hear about that new burger place that opened up not far from here? <laughs> oh no, and then, never mind. I just the babies then, like burgers. Then, next day, be like, man, like we haven't had cheeseburgers in a while. And then later that night at Gosh. dinner, she's like, hey, do you want to try that new burger spot? I was like, oh, do you? Do you? That that's, sounds. Good. It's a great idea, babe. That's <laughs> using your magic wand for evil. There, Harry it is. Potter. It is, but that's it's bad. It's, Does I, Max has Max I, had a burger yet? I this can't. Is the no. third week with Max. <laughs> yeah. He's it's going to be three one. weeks burger week. Yeah, yeah I think the so. gift a burger. I when think it's I like start, weddings, right? When I just throw one on the on the grill for him. Yeah. And, exactly. and see what just happens. Wheel the, wheel the baby out through the grill. <laughs> I'm thinking. All well, right. So now uh, how that experiment goes, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep everyone posted on that. So thank thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to check out the, the Patreon site as well to stay connected to. Um, you can you can hop on there and actually try for a week for free. Now they, they allow that. Wow. Which is pretty cool. So uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. And don't forget that training changes behavior.